Hello and welcome to section 2, Image Classification Using Convolutional New Network. And in this video, we will talk about loading required convolutional neural network model for image classification. And before we get into the actual code and explaining it step by step, I would like to just show you what we will be working with. So this is our example a mini application, you can find it in the source directory. For this section, it's index HTML. And this is simply just two buttons and an image, right? So this is the image that will be classified. And when you click on classify, uh, we will use the TensorFlow API to detect the probability that this particular image belongs to a specific class. And I'll talk about those classes in a moment, but uh, you can see that we have, uh, in this case, 82, almost 83% probability that this is a border collie on this picture. And the number of classes and how well a given model is actually performing on specific tasks, it really depends on the model itself. Here we are using a mobile net convolutional neural network. This is a pre-trained model, so this has been tr already trained and we are just using it, the results of this pre-trained model. And just keep in mind that mobile net was designed, was optimized for size and speed, right? So it's very good at actually working really fast. And in some cases it might not be that accurate, but you know, it's pretty good when it comes to speed. So we can also click out or load random image and we'll just get the random image from Flickr and we can just click on classify and it will show us the classes that, you know, that our model thinks the particular image belongs to, right? So we can click, okay, you get the idea. And yeah, and it seems that when it comes to dogs, this model is pretty good. So that's interesting. Okay, so let's have a look at this code. So let's open index.html and this is a very simple web page, okay? We have just two buttons, as you've just seen on the web page. We have one image and here we have to notice one interesting thing. The first thing is that this image has to be a specific size. And this particular model supports 224 by 224, right? So you have to make sure that your images comply to this size if you want to actually perform the classification using this model. And here, just by defining the right height and width, we can actually do that using just standard HTML IMG tag, okay? So this is the first thing that we have to know. The second one is that we have to provide cross origin equals anonymous. And this is because the cross origin problems is when you are accessing resources from other domains, JavaScript has its and web browser implement all this security and measurements. And I won't go into that, but this allows us to actually use images from outside, right? Because we are using a specific URL. And when we load in a random image, then again, we are using outside URL. So we have to provide cross origin anonymous to make it work. Then after that, we have just uh, place our results. And that's pretty much when it comes to the actual structure of a web page. So you can see that this is very basic HTML structure. Um, so what's next? Well, the first script tag that we have after that near the end of the page, this is the actual TensorFlow.js library. And this is our local version. So tf.js file is actually located in source directory. Then we have two very important JavaScript files. The first one, ImageNet classes. And this is the index numbers and the name of the classes that we've seen in the detection part. So we need that because our model don't have the name of the classes inside of, of it. We have to, we only get the big arrays with probabilities and we have to then figure out the name of the classes based on this huge array. So ImageNet underscore classes, this is just a mapping between the indexes of this huge array and the name of the classes. And then we have index.js. This is the, our main file. 
where we have all of our code. Okay, so we have JavaScript files and let's have a look at index.js. So here you can see the high level overview of what's going on. And the first thing that you have to notice is that our main entry function, the function that we uh, pretty much execute our page is actually loading. This is mobile net demo. And this what we'll be covering in this video specifically. And open this function and go through it. So the task of mobile net demo is to load a, a pre-trained model and get it ready pretty much for classification. And we'll be using the mobile net variable to save this model so we can later use it and the key function here is tf load layers model so as you remember if you want to access the, the tensorflow.js api we have to use a tf uh, name or object okay so tf dot means that we are accessing some kind of function or as i said method um in this particular library. So load layers model pretty much gets a pre-trained model in a specific format. And this is a JSON format. And it actually kind of a, creates this model that we can use. Okay, so we have to provide to load layers model, we have to provide the URL for this model. And thanks to Google, we have it online for convenience, right? And this is the URL. A mobile net model path URL. And after that, we've got our model inside mobile net variable. One thing to keep in mind, you will see this all the time, is that we are using the keyword called await. And await is basically used when we are using a asynchronous functions and you know normal functions are synchronous. That means that they block the operation of the whole web browser or maybe to be more specific they run in the background but they actually block the execution of the other code and asynchronous functions can work in a background and you have to just define the action when they done they will present the results to themselves or to you as a user and await basically turn those asynchronous functions into synchronous functions so normal functions so in this case, tf load layers model, it is actually a asynchronous function and a wait just waits until this function adds, right? So just keep that in mind and that every time you see a wait, it means that we are just waiting for a synchronous function to finish. And this is just for simplicity. Okay, so this is once we've got this mobile net model loaded, we can then kind of a set up the our mini application so what we are doing here is that we are first just getting the our element this is our button and we just say okay when you click on this button please do the classification so we are assigning uh the classify function this one to on click attribute for our button and this is simply a very quick way of uh, catching the click. So every time we click on this button classify, the classify function will actually be executed. So the one that you can see here. And what we, the only thing that we do in this function is that we are basically just getting the image and then we run and predict on this image. And we'll talk about predict in a moment because there's this all of the juice there, all of the details are there about the actual classification. So right now, the only thing that you have to do or actually know about just loading the model is that we have to run load layers model on the right with the right URL. And then we have to have some way of actually getting the image that we want to classify and use predict on this image to actually get results. And we'll talk about results in a moment.